Burgash, and Farali. You have traveled at the behest of Temple Benavoria to investigate the grave robbings of recent. There uh, was word that a man, a human man, who wore dark cloaks stole about in the dead of night, and he is your best lead on who might be involved in this. And uh, the clues that you have found have all pointed you to this location, a ruined keep not far outside of the city, maybe three or four miles away from the city. In its basement, you find in the dark corridors, there are some torch lights, uh, some torches lit. So this is indicating that somebody is here, or at least somebody was here very recently. Uh, Burgash is going to take the lead of the two. He's the defender, much higher AC, and he is able to uh, handle enemies coming up close. The party go, uh, is going to move down the corridor. Uh, Burgash is going to stop here at the edge of this first torchlight, and he does see there is a partially lit up room to his left. It looks empty. It looks like a, an old barracks of some sort. It looks like it hasn't been used in a while. So they decide to go ahead and move along. There is a stair descending. Uh, when they reach the top of it, um, something occurs. From the darkness ahead flies a dagger. Quick and true, this is an attack against Burgash's AC. Uh, that is a 21. That is a narrow miss. Burgash barely blocks the dagger on his heavy shield. Far uh, Farali, with her half-elven low-light vision, can make out um, in the dim ahead that there is a figure hiding and the description does fit the human man that supposedly was involved in this. And he does shout, Boss, we got company! There is a shout back from somewhere not too far away. Well then, let them come. We have a welcoming party for them if they want it this way. This would be initiative. Um, all the player characters and enemies present all roll initiative checks. Uh, Burgash gets to go first. It is his turn. Since he does not have low light vision, he can't really make out what's ahead. He is going to go ahead and wait. Uh, Farley sees the cloaked man ahead move down that corridor. There is some sort of torchlight ahead, but she can't make it out. Uh, at the moment because of the walls blocking her sight. Uh, but he has moved away, and that's all that they really hear. Okay. Uh, nothing happens until he gets back to Burgash's turn. Or wait, no, he was he was waiting. So what he's going to do is take his Tilkut choose to come in now. Uh, he's going to take a, a, a move that's going to get him down the stairs a little ways. He's going to go ahead and go into a double move, leading him into this chamber. He sees there are another set of stairs going down. There's what looks like some old tables. There's an adjoining chamber where he sees a man cloaked in uh, black and crimson robes. And in front of him is the animated corpse of some strong-looking man. It's a pretty hulking-looking zombie there. Uh, Burgash, I believe, actually has a little bit more movement left. Uh, a couple more squares. He's going to go ahead and, and uh, finish out his move. Um, it is Farali's turn now. She is, is going to take a double move. She'll hang a little ways back, getting some cover from the wall there. Uh, the mage notices both of them come in. You should have left well enough alone. You will find your doom here, fools. Uh, there are more zombie sounds coming, uh, this time not from ahead, but from behind, uh, down those other staircase, down that other staircase. Uh, just some faint moans and the slow thuds of shuffling footsteps on the stone floor, drawing ever closer. Okay, it is the mage's turn. The mage is going to go ahead and cast a spell. Um... He does a few gestures, and a burst of thunder erupts from in between the two player characters. Uh, this is uh, attacking both of them. The mage gets a 13 versus Burgash's fortitude, and a 9 versus Farali's fortitude. 
which in fact those are both misses so there's a explosion of rumbling thunder but they both are able to stave it off with their with their fortitude with their physical toughness and and endurance okay the mage after casting his spell is going to move behind what appears to be some sort of altar stone altar with old blood stains so he's trying to get some cover uh, the zombie now takes its turn. It staggers up to Burgash with its uh, large, powerful hands outstretched, and it makes a grab attack. This is a 16 attack versus Burgash's reflex. That would be a hit. Burgash is grabbed by the zombie. Again, a dagger is thrown from hiding by the cloaked man who had successfully made a stealth check. Um, the dagger is an attack against Burgash. He, uh, Burgash has cover. That is a 17. No hit. The band is going to move out into the room and get a little bit of a better look, uh, view of what's going on. Uh, it is Burgash's turn. He is grabbed by the zombie. Uh, he... Is clutching his bastard sword. He uses a prayer called Holy Strike. Radiant, silvery platinum light emanates from his blade as he swings it at the zombie. He attacks for 13. Uh, that is barely a hit, and the zombie does appear to be vulnerable to the radiant energy on the blade. Uh, so that is a total of 13 radiant damage to the zombie. Burgash attempts to escape the zombie's grab as his move action. He makes an athletics check. He gets an 11. That's a fail. And for his last action, he's going to divine challenge the zombie. In the name of the Platinum Dragon, cower before me, foe. Uh, it is Farlai's turn. She is going to... I believe she'll move up. She is going to cast her spell, Dragon Frost, at the zombie. A biting gale of frosty wind emanates from her staff. Uh, that is an attack of 19 versus the zombie's fortitude. That does not hit. And she is going to move back into the darkness, staying uh, away from the danger. Uh, the sounds of the collective zombie moans gets louder and louder until they finally are appearing there at the top of the other stair. There are three of them. These do not appear as well put together as the zombie that's grabbing Burgash. They are much more frail and much older and rotted. They look like they're not holding together very well. Um, a couple of them have a barely enough move with their slow staggers to charge Burgash. The other one just kind of comes out into the room. Uh, the two charge Burgash. That is a 10 attack versus his AC. That one misses. The other one's a 21. Barely missing. Just kind of pounds on some of Burgash's plate and doesn't exactly uh, cause any real damage. Uh, that evil mage comes out from his cover. Uh, he casts a spell uh, from his outstretched palms. A dart of what looks like arcane force shoots towards Burgash quickly. That is a 23 versus his reflex that definitely hits him. That blasts him for 10 force damage. Burgash uh, now goes from 38 to 28 hit points. Uh, the zombie who is grabbing Burgash attempts to uh, basically pummel him with his free hand. That's an 8 versus Burgash's AC, definitely not a hit. The zombie just keeps holding uh, holding him. Uh, the bandit draws another dagger. He doesn't quite want to get up close to that dangerous-looking dragonborn with the large sword. He will throw the dagger. That is a 23 versus Burgash's AC. Barely hits him. Uh, just uh, slices him a little bit for four hit points. Burgash goes from 28 to 24 hit points. 